Afternoon, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here doing today's presentation. Uh, looking at trading, we're going to be running this over the course of the year. Um, if you've got questions during the webcast, drop them in the Q&A box. If they uh, beyond the remit of where we are at that point, I'll take them at the end. Otherwise, I'll pick them up as we go along. But certainly, we've got time for, for, for questions in, in that regard. Um, legal disclaimers, as always. Um, this series is going to run monthly during 2018. This being the first in this series, taking us through trading, the different products, ways, styles, etc. Uh, remember the 2017 event, uh, in particular those three, which were my three trading systems. I've ultimately settled on just trading the my primary, which is a 721. And I'm also trading it in a, in a, in a daily chart. Um, so I've been long since early Jan. Uh, I was having a peak a moment ago. We're about 1,600 points up on that trade. Um, and then there are the live face-to-face -face events in Durban, Joburg, and Cape Town, uh, which tie into this. But this this really is designed, the, the, the live event's only 90 minutes. Um, and of course, not everyone can make Durban, Cape Town, and Joburg. So really, the webcast series is meant to be much broader and, and deeper than, than the face-to-face. -face. Uh, quote from Van K. Tharp which I think is critically important. I'm going to come back to it in a number of ways uh, over the course of the year. Um, it really is our biases. It's our beliefs more than anything else that are, are, are making us money, or as the case may be, losing us money. And, and that's what we have to manage. We, we touched on it a bit today. Um, as I said, we're going to come back to it repeatedly. It is very much the, the psychology of trading and how to find our souls in the right spot that makes it work for us. Quick look at, at Trader's Matrix. So Trader's Matrix is something which uh, my colleague and myself at SA Warrens developed probably about 15 years ago. We need to have uh, goals. We need to have discipline, money management, risk management. Basically, we need our risk in place. We need resources. Uh, resources used to be a lot more of an issue. You know, when we initially designed this, you know, you, some computers were still slow. Online brokers were uh, of varying degrees of, of decentness. Um, data was very hard to get by. Really, the challenge these days for resources more than anything probably is having enough cash in your account to trade with. Um, and then we need a system. And I'm going to touch on this quickly. Uh, those two links, those three links there give some systems. Um, point being, when we look at a system, we typically, as a rule, overly complicated. We decide that a system needs to be massively complicated because as human beings, we believe in that concept of complexity. And we shouldn't, but we do. But the point of the system is keep it simple. And, and you're saying to yourself, well, what's some system? Well, go to just one lap. You know, uh, look at what Warren Peacock's done, what Elvain Berger's done. Uh, standard online share trading, again, with Warren Peacock and Goth McKenzie. Goth does his high probability uh, CFD trading courses. Um, you need a system, but you know, we, we stress it too much. Now, I remember one of the first pieces of advice I got in designing a system now some 20 odd years ago, and at the time I hated it. And this chap basically said to me was, well, write down what your top two or three indicators, oscillators, whatever they are, write down what they are, go and find the standard uh, 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 metrics for them. In other words, RSI is 14 and you buy when it cuts up through 30 and sell when it cuts down through 70. You know, put the standard metrics in, know what the standard trading rules around them are, and then wait for it to happen. Um, the problem, of course, was that waiting. Yeah, you know, I hated the waiting. I wanted to trade. I wanted to trade today. So you know, I think at the point, and I, I, if memory serves, I was looking to trade De Beers, and I couldn't get a trade on De Beers. It wasn't coming, and it looked like it would take forever. So I basically went through the market starting at A, working my way through to Z, uh, trying to find anything that met my system requirements. And when they didn't, I fudged it. The point is keep it simple and then keep it disciplined. Um, and if you like RSI and MACD, well, fine. I mean, the RSI and MACD is probably a bad example, too similar. But yeah, go find what you like. Your, your note for my systems, I'm either using just price or um, I'm using moving averages. I don't step beyond that at all. First trick is what are your goals? And if your goals are to get rich quick or you hate your job and you want a new job or you hate your life and you want a new life or something like that, then trading is not for you. Uh, yeah, tr trading is not going to solve your short-term problems. Um, and wanting to get rich in a hurry or, or change your life or change your job is a short-term problem. If you're coming to trading to learn a new life skill, okay, now we're in business. And, and, and I, you know, points there, learn new life skill. It's learning, gonna take time, it's new, yeah, of course, we newbies. And ultimately, trading is a life school. 
Right? It's something we can learn. The problem is we come to trading to get rich in a hurry. We hate our jobs, so we take a week's leave and try our hand at being a trader. And, and of course, we get killed in that week. Um, you know, chatting with uh, uh, Peter Redenhuis earlier today, he's been at day trading now for, I think he's in his 10th or 11th month, and he's now starting to to really make it work. Um, and it's taken him a year. And let's be honest, he had a lot of prior experience. He didn't go into that cold. A uh, bunch of guys who came in at Storm Trading at the same time, who came in, who came in cold, they started in March, so they're almost 10 months into it. Maybe they started April, it was around April or March. Um, that they saw that they're now starting to break even. Now they stopped the losing and now they're starting to break even. Um, so goals need to be, I mean, your first year goal, don't lose money. Now, forget making profit in your first year. If you can get out of your first year at break even, you're doing great. No, so, so don't have as your first year goal, you want to double your money. No, no, nonsense. First year goal, 0% growth, but 0% percent percent uh, loss. Your goals are developing a process, uh, a system, call it what you will. Mastering your risk, uh, getting that risk right, um, getting the, the trade size right, getting the stop right, getting the stop execution right. And then, of course, doing perfect trades. I'm going to come back to perfect trades. So we'll park that there for now. So write down what you, you know, so, so what is it? And, and, and there are your three. I mean, you know, f in fact, four. Uh, don't lose money. Uh, develop and, and refine that process. Master the risk, which is truthfully part of that process. And do perfect trades, which, again, is part of that process. We're just pulling out two of the more important parts. What you'll note there is it's nothing to do about making money. And, in fact, we'll talk about perfect trades in a bit, but let me quickly uh, position it out there right now to say you know, my focus of trading has not been money for 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 20 years uh, my focus of trading is discipline and 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 risk and ultimately the perfect trade if i get all of that right well then money will flow price movement price is what matters i say all the time there's one truth in the market it's price Everything else is opinion. Whether something's fairly or, or expensive or cheap, whether something's going up or down, all of those sort of things are opinion. What we know is, 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 is that the price is true, last price, that's all that matters. Why is something going up or down? Well, in truth, it's, you know, if it's going up, it's because there's buyers. If it's going down, because there's sellers. And I know they're, 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 there's for every buyer, there's a seller, and for every seller, there's a buyer. But if something to be going higher, the, 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 there's lots of buyers and sellers are pulling up further and further away drawing those buyers up you know what we're always trying to do with the market and it comes back to the complexity we're trying to 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 in, in, in a sense what the process what we're trying to do is understand it and here's a top tip you can't understand the market zero chance just forget about it stop trying to understand the market find the direction it's going in jump on that bus it's probability of profit that's all that does matter probability of profit now, is there a probability here that I can make a profit? Yes. Well, then let's jump on the bus. Doesn't mean you will in that particular trade, but if there's a, a positive expectation out of that setup, then ultimately over time it will. We need to get away from that fixation of trying to understand, of trying to think that uh, Business Day TV has got the secrets, um, that, that, that we can you know, interpret the market better than anyone else, that we can see the end of the world and the crash coming and all of that sort of thing. It doesn't matter. And then the point is what to trade. And what do we typically do is we open an online share trading account. We do our FICA. We drop in 10,000 Rand and we start trading CFDs. Why CFDs? Well, because it's shares, right? And we understand shares. We, we can see what's happening. We can pull them apart. We know we can look at Capitec or Naspas and think the price is silly. We can think that Steinhoff can't possibly go that low, et cetera, et cetera. So we jump into the share space. And typically we get killed in the share space. A couple of reasons. One. We don't know how to trade yet, but we're going in with derivatives, i.e. CFDs. So, you know, it's like, I don't know how to swim, but tell you what, drop me out, you know, 20 Ks off the coast of Durban and, and, and let's see if I can learn. You might learn, but probably you're going to drown or get eaten by sharks or run over by a, a, a ship on the way to, to wherever. Um, and you're doing the same, same with shares, you know, try the shallow end. Um, what I don't like about shares is highly volatile, single event risk. What I mean by single event risk? Steinhoff. You know, one Tuesday, one Tuesday, in fact, one Monday, everything's fine. Back in December, Tuesday, an announcement that results will be released, but unaudited market didn't like that very much. Wednesday, no results. CEO fired. 
boom, stock is suddenly trading now sub 10 rand. Now, I'm going to come back to Steinhoff, but it's that single event risk. You know, how much did the index lose on the day? Yeah, hardly nothing. Steinhoff was actually, you know, north of 2% in the index at the time, in the top 40 index. But it, it you know, one stop, you know, 2%, even if it loses 90% or whatever it lost on that Wednesday, I forget the exact amount, um, you know, the rest of the index can carry it. So shares are highly volatile and have massive single event risk. And I don't like either. I don't like volatility. So volatility is great when you're in the trade and it's going your way and you're long and it's volatile up. That's great. But what happens if it's volatile down and you're in the wrong side of it? And I don't like that single event risk. I mean, indices have single event risk, particularly around political events and the like, but really much easier to trade. Commodities, I've never, I've never traded commodities, um, any of them. Uh, in the South African environment, there are very few. There are some ETNs and ETFs that we can trade, and in some cases, we can even get gearing on them. The trick is, typically, we are trading uh, uh, two legs here. And the one leg is we're trading the underlying commodity, and then we're trading the currency at the same time. So you might be right on platinum, but the RAND might go against you and take the shine out of your trade. You can fix that by trading and by going into web trader and trading in, in US markets, but certainly I've never gone there. They're, they're typically mixed volatile. They're not as volatile as shares. And they don't quite suffer as much from single event risk. Oil, of course, being the exception um, where, you know, something from OPEC or something like that can change the game on, on, on commodities. Um, indices, medium to low volatility and great to trade. I say to folks, start with an index. They don't have single event risk. They, 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 they typically trend quite nicely. And let me go to the screen here. So this is our top 40 index uh, daily chart. This is my 721. I am currently long. We would have gone long the index around about there. Uh, I think 50, 53, 400 on the all share was my entry, if I remember. 53, 420, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's nice, there's nice simple trends. Yes, within them there's some movements. In this trade here, I got stopped out in that pullback at that point there. Um, so I lost all of that last run. My purpose in a trade, my aim in a trade, and I'm a trend-based trader. I'm looking for those trends. And that's just a 7 and 21 moving average. My aim in a trade is to catch 70% of the move. If I catch 70% of the move, that is a monster of a trade. That's all I need. So the move would be, in this case, from there to there. And in truth, I only caught about 45% of that move. In the current move, it's moot because I'm, you know, so there was the bottom, but there was my entry. You're never going to get the bottom. You're never going to get the top. We took that short there, uh, netted a couple of hundred points off to stop. There was a nice long here. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to re refine the strategy. What we do see is that, the trend is up, but we keep on getting like that short there, which cost us money. That short there, which made us a smidgen, but not very much. That short there, which if memory serves, was a break even. Can't we, you know, can't we say market's going up, let's only take the longs. We, we, I need a strategy and idea for that, but we'll come to that in time. The point being is, you know, nice, simple index trading. If we go to equities, and I was looking at a couple of those just before we went in. And let's just pick a, 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 a signia. You know, nice going up, you know, bang, if you caught it, then sideways, bang, 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 and then coming back down. That is not fun to be trading. Now, maybe Signia is a bad example. Maybe there are better examples out there. I'm sure there is. One of them is probably going to be Capitech. Uh, did we pull it? Yes, we did. Um, question, uh, Capitech, and let's zoom out a whole bunch. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, look at that trend. Uh, that track goes back to 680 and, in fact, might even end up going further back, um, back to 560 and since September 16. And, in fact, I mean, I can tell you now it was 200 bucks in August 14 um, when, there we are, when African Bank went bust. A uh, nice trend. It gets a bit messy, trend, messy, trend. Trade the trends. Take them with you. Nice, simple, no need for rocket science. But I'm still... Uh, Chakardis, that is um, Iris. It is part of, in fact, they call it Viewpoint. It's part of Standard Bank. So if you go click on Viewpoint up there, you get to that charting package there. 
Uh, yes, and it is live. It is intraday. It is end of day, weekly, monthly. I'm also pulling in uh, foreign indices. You get currencies and commodities. So I also trade the Nikkei 225, uh, DAX, uh, S&P 500, and FTSE. So indices is my preferred thing to trade. My next preferred thing to trade would be FX. Really low volatile. Really, and when I say FX, I'm talking majors. I'm not talking ZAR. ZAR is, is, is a minor and is not an FX that any sane person should be trading. Uh, but really, really low volatility. And if you look at the equation, you know, how often does our top 40 do 2% in a day? Frankly, very infrequently. How often does a major currency do 2% in a day? Hardly ever. Shares, how often do top 40 shares do in a day? I mean, I, I'll show you. So if you log on to, to, to online share trading and you see this block over on the right-hand side, it gives you top five movers up, top five movers down of top 40 only. And we have five that are more than 3% up and two that are more than 2% down. So that's six just immediately right there. And in fact, there's a couple more between three and two here. So maybe seven or eight shares that are done more, more than 2%. Now you're saying, cool. Hey, imagine all the money I can make. Yeah, unless you're on the wrong side of the trade. If you're the wrong side of the trade, well, then you just got wiped out. If you went in today, long style or for short, Mr. Price, you just got yourself nailed to the wall. So my advice is, is, is typically, folks, start with indices. Touch on which in a moment. Uh, gravitate in the beauty of indices. So I'm trading uh, uh, Aussie and I'm going to and trading the DAX. And the beauty of the DAX is it's fairly uncorrelated to the Aussie. Uh, the trick with the DAX is it's 25 euros a point. Some exchanges will give you a five euro mini, uh, which is about 80 bucks per point. So it's quite hectic. Although it's a 12,000 point index, so there's less points than we see in the Aussie. Um, why the DAX? Time zones. Folks will say, well, S&P, oh, S&P is a great index to trade, terrible time zone. And I'm trading in a day charts. When you're prone, you're making money in indices, then you can move to FX. The problem with going straight to FX, um, uh, Tabang, yes, the webinar has been recorded. It will be available later this afternoon on the website. The thing with FX is it's the biggest, most liquid market in the world. So JP Morgan, City Chase Manhattan, uh, and all the others take their best traders, give them 100 million US and say, go make money. So you're trading against the best in the world. And to be perfectly honest, when you start, you're not the best in the world. That's, yeah, that's just how it is. It, 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 it's going to take us time to get to that position. So I say start with trading indices. And the locally in the top 40, we've got the Aussie, uh, which is the all share. The underlying is top 40, uh, 10 rand a point. Um, but the Ormi is even better at one rand a point. It is a perfect place to start. You can start with 10,000 rand. Margin is about five and a half. That means you can lose four and a half thousand points before you, you don't bust out. But at that point, you've got margin only. So four and a half thousand points and you need to top up. Four and a half thousand is a lot of points to you to lose if you're trading one contract at a time. Your cost is 12 rand 50 plus VAT per contract. Um, and you can start small. Importantly, if you're trading Ormi and you're using it as testing and the like, is, is don't look at your total PL, look at your profits. Because with an Ormi at 12.50 plus cost, call it 15 Rand in and out, is 30 Rand. Um, that is 30 points. Whereas an Aussie, it's only three points. So focus on your, on your points PL, not your Rands and cents PL. If you've got 10,000 Rand and you want to trade FX, you're going to get killed. If you've got 10,000 Rand and you want to trade CFDs, you're going to get killed. For 10,000 Rand, you can go and trade the Omi, one Rand a point. And I know you're not going to get rich in a hurry, but remember what your target for this year is to start with 10,000 Rand and to finish with 10,000 Rand. And that's what the Omi lets you do. It's nice, it's simple. It, it's absolutely, it's, to my mind, it's where every wannabe trader should start. I, I, I wish, so the Omi didn't even exist back in my day when I started trading in the 90s, but even the Aussie wasn't really available for, for private clients. In fact, we just traded equity and then warrants and then moved into, into single stock futures. Um, but the Omi is a great place to trade. Um, and if you go to, I'll show you the, ah, uh, it just logged me out. Come on, really? Uh, on the main page, at, uh, if you look under webinar downloads, look for trading index futures, and I talk around the index futures, the different products and the like, and you can get the, the various different points.
Uh, folks, the webcast has been recorded. The video will be online later this afternoon, and you can go through it at your leisure. Um, and then, of course, as the other ones come out, to revisit them, download them, share them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a point of, you know, your target is to trade for all Z, probably uh, maybe a bunch of contracts. Start with all me, move to all Z, uh, then get into some some FX trading. Perhaps add some other indices. The DAX is a really great one. Uh, FTSE's got a bit of correlation with us. It's not as much as it used to be um, with SAB now gone, but certainly, you know, some of the biggies, uh, Billiton also on the on, on there. When we had SAB, Miller and, and, and Anglo right up at the top and Old Mutual as a biggie and the like, our correlation between us and the FTSE was just too close. You want uncorrelated. Um, and then once you're, once you're successfully trading on the Aussie and other indices, you can look at currencies. Now, what do I mean by successfully? I don't mean a good day, a good week, a good month. I mean a good 12 months. I mean a full year before you scale. One of the mistakes we make in trading is we scale up too quick. We scale up our trade position size. We scale up the, what, what we are trading is we are too eager to get to that end goal, which is to become the successful person who lives off their trading. And we're far too quick. And by scaling, you know, we have a, literally, I've seen guys have three or four good trades and double their trade size and then pr promptly proceed to wipe out. You have a good year of trading. Well, now you can increase your trade size. Do you double it? Probably not. You increase it by a little bit. You're trading, you know, you're trading one Aussie, you push it up to two Aussies, and then you try three, and, and you slowly but surely work your way up rather than, than, than jumping on. Um, what we also, for, for, for Aussie trading, of course, you trade that as usual. I'll show you how to register it for it. If you want to trade FX, there's currency futures and online share trading, which is ZAR only. So it's uh, all ZAR backed. You've got uh, euro, dollar, sterling, and uh, I think there's a yen. Otherwise, spot currencies across all the majors um, at webtrader.standardbank.com, which is the offshore platform. And there you can trade many lots. But perfect the index before you move on. And then in a perfect world, your index system will also work on your currencies. So it's that uncorrelated, two or three, two or three uh, uh, indices, a couple of major crosses. I'll tell you what I'm looking to do. So I trade Aussie, obviously profit and losses in ZAR, that's fine. Trading DAX, so profit and loss is in Euro. Important, make sure that your offshore trading account is base currency Euro. Because if its base currency is US dollar, every time you do a trade, they're converting dollars to Euros. There's a cost and a spread, and then Euros back to dollars. So make sure the account is base Euros. Trade DAX, and then I trade, I want to trade Sterling Euro. Um, because the, 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 then what you've got is your, your base currency there is a euro as well. I mean, USD euro is what I wanted to trade, but it's, it's, uh, dollars. And again, currency conversions. So I go sterling euro, boom, nice and simple. And I get myself a euro generator of income. Make sure that base account is in euros. And limit size, I said it already, don't go big. If you, if you go big, you will go home. You know, if, if you're sitting here with 50,000 and, and you think, Yo, come on, man, I can trade the Aussie. You know, margin's only 50. You can, but don't. If you're sitting here with 50,000, trade one or me. Put 40 grand in the bank for a year. Earn yourself a measly bit of interest, 5 or 6%. Um, better yet, go and put it in, 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 in retail government bonds and earn yourself 7 or 8% for the year. Take your 10,000 rand and trade all me for the rest of the year. If at the end of the year you've still got 10,000 Rand, i.e. you broke even, i.e. you met what you were trying to achieve, well, cool, now you're in biz, now add another 10 or maybe, to, you know, don't go big. You know, I, I, folks all the time, they're like, I've got 100,000, I can trade everything. You can. What you're actually just going to do, though, is you're going to lose your money, all of it, double quick time. We are trading leverage. I mean, it's one of the issues. And, and, and to the first point, if you want to trade equity, then trade equity, don't trade CFTs. In other words, start with just equity. See if you can make money without the gearing. Because all the gearing is going to do is it's going to amplify your profits, but it's also going to amplify your losses. And if you're a newbie and you're new to this, and you're probably going to be experiencing losses, so in fact, you're just going to go bust quicker. So trade straight equity. As soon as you go into, into the leverage space, index futures, FX, CFDs, single stock futures, all of those you can lose more than you start with. Your 10K can suddenly be 100. And I, I'm going to park the leverage here. I'm going to come back to it in the Feb presentation. Uh, dates are up. You can start taking bookings for that. Um, and what we'll see with that is I'm going to spend a lot of time on leverage 
individual position leverage, overall portfolio leverage and the like. Um, but be very, very careful with, with that leverage. And as I said, you know, if you're jumping into the deep end, so with, with Aussie, you don't want to start with Aussie at 10 rand a point because you make a, 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 a thousand point mistake, you just lost 10 grand. An Ormi thousand point mistake, you've lost a grand. Not nice, but it's literally a 10. If you want to trade CFDs, equity CFDs, fine. Spend a year or two trading equity. Top 40 shares. It means you're going long only. That's also fun. But it means that you get to learn and then you can slowly start to gear it up rather than just jumping straight in. And that's what burns people, the fact that we jump straight in. So as I said, shares are hard. Volatility, single event risk, Steinhoff, all of that sort of thing. And the reason I'm coming back now the third time to this and harping on equity and harping on, on the CFDs is because it's where people tend to default start and is because it's where people tend to bust out. I, I started trading shares. I busted out repeatedly. I no longer trade shares. I, I trade indices. I trade FX. I trade ETFs. I have no interest in trading shares uh, because of that single event risk um, and because of that, that volatility. The, you know, start with the army. Shares are hard. And, 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 and you know, how do you want to trade? Stick to the easy stuff. You know, forget about, and, and, and trade the trends and forget the fundamentals. There's Steinhoff. If you were long Steinhoff at this point here when it collapsed, so there was the, the, the Tuesday, and then it then collapsed on the Wednesday. If you were long there, what the heck were you doing long? This is a stock that at best we can say is going down. There is nothing to say it's going up. Yeah, we've got a kangaroo tail there, maybe that. But trade with the trend. And if the trend is saying we're going down, well, then you're looking for shorts. And if the trend is saying we're going up, well, then you're looking for longs only. And forget about the fundamentals. You know, forget about like, oh, yes, but. Um, and forget about standing in front of a train. Here is uh, Capitech. Now, for the last three years, two years, I don't even know how long now, some guy's been mailing me on a regular basis and saying, ah, time for the Capitech short. Where on earth are we seeing a short in Capitech? Capitech is saying one simple thing right now. Buy me on weakness. Pretty much that is a, what moving average is that? That's a daily chart. It is a 60 day daily, 60 day uh, moving average. Uh, basically what this says here is every time it hits the 60 day, you buy it. Hits the 60 day, you buy it. And there's your one entry, two entry, three, four, five, six, seven, eight entries. And every one of those entries is currently significantly in profit. What you're doing is you're keeping it simple. You're riding that trend. Now, I'm looking at in, at at, at uh, 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 stocks here. I don't like stocks. I get that. I just wanted the charts. We can go and again, nice and simple. Um, you know, he has the same story, but here we're looking at at, at indices. So there's the the J200, the top 40. Um, there is. I know what we're going to look at. So he has S and P 500. My entry on S&P 500, and I have been long ever since, goes back to November 2016. So there, I entered that index at about 2100. I'm still long of that index. The RAND strength is hurting me. I used a different uh, methodology to the one on screen here. Um, in fact, we can go look at the methodology and I'll show it to you. It is there. Drop that to weekly and change that to S&P 500. Uh, so now we actually need to zoom in here because I only want to go back. So, boom, 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 boom. There was my buy. 7 November 2016 on the S&P 500. You know what happened the same week? Trump got elected. Yeah, supposedly, end of the world. And the market just took off. It's come back to the 15 every so often. That's a 15, 30, 60. Um, if you go to justonelap.com and uh, and the strategies, look for 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 for, eat, uh, for for trading strategy. You can subscribe. I send out the emails and the like. Um, that's just trading a trend. The, the 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 story told you. You know, the day Trump won, I was in Cape Town. I woke up that mo that morning. Um, S and P was down 500 points. Our index was down a thousand. They both closed the day green. 
and they've never looked back. In other words, keep it simple. Find those trends. Hop on the bus. Don't not tell me. So you know, is 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 this looking stretched or short? The furthest it's been away from that 15 week uh, since moving average since since I started trading it. Does it look stretched? Yeah. So what do you do? Nothing. You wait for your entry, you wait for your exit. And if you're not getting entry or exit signals, you do nothing. If you're in a trade, you carry on going. Uh, there was my one entry. There was a second entry, which I didn't take because the trade wasn't in profit, thanks to Rand strength. Point being is, is that don't, don't stress the story. Focus on the price chart. That's all that matters, really. It's all that matters. And time frames, what do we do? Again, we come in, we want the excitement, we want the thrill, we want something to take our mind off our job. So we drop down into five minute charts or maybe hourly charts. I spent last year trading uh, my 721 on the Aussie futures in an hourly chart. Now, in theory, an hourly chart is easy for me, right? Because my job is to watch markets, I don't have a desk job eight to five. Um, yes, I'm on an airplane sometimes or. or you know, in a meeting or something, but even I struggled to trade an hourly chart. And what I mean by struggled was I kept on, main, I kept on missing entries. Exits were fine. I put a trailing stop into the system. I leave it be to run. But I was struggling to, 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 to catch all the entries, and I slipped a number of entries. And I'm the oak who's actually, you know, in, in theory, I should be able to do this absolutely easy because I have the time. Because if I'm watching a market, I'm actually doing my job. And I struggled. So I, I forget that I moved on to daily charts. So when we're looking at this chart here, uh, we are looking at a daily chart. And that's now the S&P, different one. But the point being is daily. So longer time frames is better. They're easier. They're more profitable. They've got less costs. They're a lot less stressful. And they're certainly a lot easier. And even if you've got the, the time in your day, rather spend the time doing something real. I mentioned perfect trade up front. So how do we typically measure a good trade? At the end of the trade, did we make a profit or not? And the truth is, what we're doing is we're measuring ourselves on the one thing that we have no control over. What we should be measuring our, 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 our success on is, did we do a perfect trade? So that's my list of what I use. Um, and what you use doesn't matter. Now, you can, have, you can add or uh, sub, to subtract for, 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 from that list as you see. But did I wait for signal? Did I enter in confirmations? I do two-step entry. Trigger, confirm. I always do two-step entry. Now, the number, if I just did trigger, I would have got into a lot more losing trades. That two-step means that when I get in, I pay a slightly higher price. But the quality of my trades has significantly increased. So it's like buying a markedly better motor vehicle, but you know the, the cost twice as good, but the cost is only 20% more. Absolutely works. Was my position size correct? Was my stop loss done accordingly? Did I just adjust the stop loss accordingly? For me, that's easy. Trailing stop on the online tra share trading system. So the stop is done. So that's the biggest truck in the world digging up the road outside my flat. Thanks, guys. I'm getting a new pavement. I had a pavement. Now I'm getting a new one. Um, did you exit as per system? Again, those last two, for me, mostly moot on the current trading method. As long as I step, set my stop loss, the rest will, you know, it will adjust itself automatically and it will exit as per system. Draw up your list of what your perfect trade is, what you want to see in a perfect trade. Set yourself two targets this year. Your first target is to break even. In other words, what you start the year with, you end the year with. And if you make money, hey, bonus, then you got some extra drink over Christmas at the end of the year. First target is break even. Second target is do a perfect trade. Don't target 100 perfect trades. Target one perfect trade. When you've done one perfect trade, target a second, and then a third, and then a fourth. But decide what your methodology is going to be, what that system is, what's your process going to be, how you're going to generate buy and sell signals. And there are glores of those out there. Keep that process simple, do some testing on it, and then trade it, perfect trade, every single time. It's as simple as that. Always be watching costs. I mentioned it with Ormi. Ormi is a great product, but it's expensive. 30 points in and out is, is expensive, whereas on Aussie it's three points. That's fine. You're basically paying for school fees in that part of the process, and, and it's a nice cheap way of doing school fees. Um, but what's your other costs? What you know? The, one of the things with CFDs, and people say to me, what, I say to them, what does the CFD cost to trade? And they told me, ah, 0.35%. Well, no, that's not true. 
0.35 years, uh, but then also I think it's 70 Rand plus VAT. Um, and then, of course, there's interest that you're paying, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, no, th there's more to it. Know what those costs are. Know what your admin fees are. What are your data fees? I used to use Ami Broker, for which I paid about 2,500 Rand a year for data. And all that got me was end-of-day data. Um, and at the same time, I was using the JC, sorry, the online share trading platform. Now I use Iris. It costs a bit more. I think it's 170 a month. But I got rid of Ami Broker. That's, that's two and a half grand I saved. So I'm spending about another 600. So I'm about 2,000 rand a year ahead, which means my trading account has 2,000 rand extra in it every single year just because I got rid of a piece of software which I really liked and it had some utility for me. But that utility wasn't making my trading any better. It was just fun. And uh, Iris is doing everything that I needed to do. If you want to trade derivatives, you need to either make a derivative account or, or, or try either open a new one or, or, or change one of your current accounts into a derivative. My advice is to open a new one. Um, so you log on, you go to my account, you go to product registration. What do you want? Warrants, futures, CFDs, option, or tax-free. Um, futures includes index, currency, uh, commodity, and, of course, single stock. They then say, do you want to action a current, one of your existing accounts, convert it into a futures or CFD or whatever, or a new one? I always do a new one. Keep your trading separate. In fact, I keep each of my trading strategies in a separate account. You get one login. Uh, that one login still just comes with, with one uh, one password, one monthly admin fee, et cetera, so th that it, it, it's, it's, it's keeping it nice and simple, but it keeps it clean. So you can see when you log in, there are my accounts, and there's my, you know, and, and there's my one futures account. Uh, I've got equity and tax frees and everything else. So keep it simple. That process will happen overnight. If you do it today, you will have the account tomorrow, being Wednesday. Uh, disclaimer, as always, contact details if you've got questions. Uh, let me check some questions here. Um, Peter, yeah, uh, Peter, you're 100 percent right. Peter's comment is is um, Manage the risk. It's 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 really about managing risk. I mean, th there's a lot of very important parts to trading. I always say the most important part of trading, in a word, what sums up a good trader, and that's discipline. In truth, that discipline is feeding into risk management. That discipline is feeding into perfect trades. That discipline, or perhaps, is being fed by um, that sort of thing. Risk management, you, 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 you know, we scoff it when we arrive. Why? Because we are dreaming of the fortunes we are going to make. We are not going to make fortunes. We are going to lose fortunes initially. We need to get that risk management right. That's stop loss, where to position it. Uh, typically, we put it too close. We need to give our stop loss more space than we think. It's action in the stop loss when it's hit. Um, it's not over trading. It's not taking 10, 10K and trading a, a 70,000 Rand uh, uh, position, et cetera. Uh, Gas service available. Choose an experienced broker to assist in the initial stages of investing uh, that one can subscribe to or use. Uh, Garth, I'm not sure if you're looking for investing or trading. Investing less so. There are a couple on the trading side. Um, if you go to just one lap, uh, I'll have it up here. Uh, no, that one there. If you go to just one lap under portfolios, trading strategies, that's a fairly lazy, ungeared trading system that we have there. Uh, check out Traders Corner from Garth McKenzie. Um, uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'll, I'll send you some others as well. Or mail me Simon at just one lap dot com. Uh, Tabang. Uh, Tabang, the video will be online later today under webinar downloads. So log on to the website, uh, go to webinar downloads, and you'll find the video right there. To see the, uh, if you open an Iris account, there are two sets of costs. You pay your admin fee for for the for the uh, 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 online share trading, and then you op you have the the cost of Viewpoint as well. Viewpoint is within. So here is the viewpoint and what you've got here. I can't remember. So what are the costs there? So I'm on, I'm paying 160 rand a month plus my 90 rand a month. So it's 250 in total is what I pay. You can get a basic. You can do a trial. Um, the delayed is not much use. It's, you can play with it a bit. Uh, level one is 10 bucks for the different levels. Level ones, you only see one level bit offer. Level five is you see five levels. That's 10 bucks. That's really neither here nor there in that sense there. Let's shut that. I don't want to train that there. Uh, Peter, 
Yeah, look, that's what we hope so as well. So <laughs> I agreed with you. Uh, minimum amount to trade indices, Angelo, uh, 10,000 Rand if you're going to trade the Ormi. So the Ormi is essentially the Aussie. You know, if we go here, so in fact, let me pull it up here because I've got, so if I pull up, am I spelling right? I am, there's Ormi. So your Ormi, which is basically the mini, so top one is the mini and the next one down is the FTSE. And you can see they, they're basically the same index. So start with the OMI. Uh, 10,000 Rand, your margin on OMI is about 5,500. It means that you can carry on trading until you've lost 4,500, which hopefully you don't do. But it means you can trade with 10,000. If you want to trade equity properly, you need 70, uh, 50. Maybe you can get away with 35 or 40. If you want to trade Aussie, you need 100. OMI. Nice and simple, 10,000 Rand, done deal. Ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there. The video will be up later. Apologies for that noise. I thought they had left. They had. They patently came back. Um, but we will be back again next month. Uh, that email has gone out. The links will be uh, on the website. And as I said, we will go through this uh, over the course of the year, going through the, the trading and building up to it. Uh, George. Uh, George, drop me a mail. I'll send you now. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll send you some links uh, in, in, in there and I'll send it to all. Give me a sec. Uh, just some links in terms of, of, of what George was looking for there around systems and processes and the stuff. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. Everyone have a grand day further. We'll chat again next month. If you're in Joburg, uh, 30th, which is next Tuesday, I'm doing a trading presentation at Glenhoe for Standard Bank clients. Uh, you're welcome to come along, 6 o'clock, running for an hour and a half. That's next Tuesday, 30 Jan, Durban and Cape Town coming later in the year. Cheers all.